We have two routers, um, both running PFSense, bam, bam, OLT. We got three of these ponds uh, populated, and we went ahead and just added another OLT um, down here for our new build that we're working on right now. And uh, just had to put in a new deck here. That's why I'm here. But very, um, very cool. We've got a 96 count fiber um, that we went ahead and ran uh, up the riverside here. <clears throat> and then that top cassette is spliced into a 12 fiber that goes over to the uh, river, um, river wall. So here's our in-house pond. Just kind of started out with this for testing. A 16 port splitter is really helpful for testing, but actually testing actual customer traffic on this one because this was a fiber that went out to a cul-de-sac with a dead end. We did this very early. Um, like I like this a lot for for troubleshooting. This uh, fiber panel right here actually hooks up four. Um, customer uh, sites for the city of Salisbury. So this is their um, DIA internet connection. And then we have three of their uh, sites out in the field um, that we're connecting back for them. Out of everything we got going on here, um, you know, the most interesting parts are this DWDM system. This is cool as hell. I mean, we're taking a single fiber, we're going 19 miles, and we're using two of those channels on these two optics right here in an LACP. And over this link, these are two one gig links. Um, you know, that is, a, that is fully capable of running 10 gig over it if there was a purpose to do so. But one gig, two one gig links, um, super, super efficient. This has been a fantastic product. Uh, absolutely would do this exact same scenario again. Running a two one gig or two 10 gig LACP connections over a DWDM single fiber system. Um, really, really damn cool. But that's, uh, that's kind of where we're at right now the uh g -Pons, the g -Pons stuff is awesome i mean we're you we feed one of these olts a 10 gigabit dat connection um this one's actually got a lot live traffic on it but you run a 10 gig dac uh and an off-band management and then that 10 gig gets split 2.5 on all four of these pond ports and those pond ports can run to these splitters these splitters can go out into the field, and we have splitters in the field. Um, when we look at a uh, test environment, this is just basically a test environment. We have a single fiber running in to a splitter. This is a splitter that you would put into a splice, a splice tray. This is just a one by eight. You're losing negative uh, 10 dB. So if you have zero coming in right here, you're gonna have negative 10 on every one of those fibers uh, that's coming out. And then they, those are just plugged into regular. Um, uh, these are the Ubiquiti Wi-Fi devices. This one has an attenuator added into it. And if you touch it, it's a little warm, but if you touch this one, it's actually a little hot. Um, they don't understand the why the attenuator is making it more uh, but it's just part of life I guess um, but anyway this is a perfect example of coming off of one of those I just got my feed right here which is just that feed is just going to a splitter right there uh, yeah right there and then that's just coming in six feet away and it's given me fantastic power levels. Um, I can come in here, I can test devices. Uh, pretty pretty cool little test, test uh, quick, easy test area. Um, what I'll do sometimes is if I'm doing a telephone provisioning, 
<clears throat> I'll come in and I'll just bring my modem, I'll make a fake router for a customer, I'll test it, get my dial tone, and then I know that as long as I'm operating on the pond that I'm working off of, there's a 100% chance it's gonna work. Um, I mean, it's like a 99% chance it's gonna work if I go to another pond. For example, up here, 19 miles away, I've got my pond in Princess Anne. Um, you know, we could run 10 gigabit wavelengths, uh, 10 gigabit over these links. I can get, I could convert this uh, two times one into a two times uh, 10. I can convert it into a four times one. Um, I could ship a circuit up. If I needed a, a one gig circuit to just layer two out of here, I go right there, any of them. And I can get it up 19 miles away. The um, routers that we're running are PFSense. Um, you know, this is a, I have two Proxmox um, servers here that run a lot of our core services, uh, SNMP stuff, and a couple phone systems run on here. These are eight core uh, servers, 32 gigs of RAM, all SSDs, um, super low power, low noise. Uh, yeah, that's about, that's about it. Just some off the shelf batteries. Um, nothing weird with the batteries. It works for us. Um, two, there's two of each battery stack. Um, and then if you look at our switches, there's two phases uh, coming in. Uh, there and there, I guess. No, that one. And they're coming down uh, and they're dual powering. So you look at a lot of this stuff, like these two items, these two items are two different phases, two different circuits. So if we lost a phase, uh, that's just a one power thing. Um, but if we lost a phase, we are still in business. This OLT is actually pretty interesting. It's powered by 120 volt, uh, just like you normally would, and a 24 volt DC power brick. And same exact concept, just running into two different power sources, two different battery banks, um, which makes for a nice, uh, nice, nice night for sleeping. Um, but that's, that's kind of that. This is an R96 count cable. I got her coming in here pretty, pretty hot. Um, we had this weird bend that I had to kind of make work. Um, we got a 96 count. This is our uh, 12 count that's going over to the river walk. Um, I got a, only one of those is being used, but this 96 count cable, I got quite a bit uh, going on. And then <clears throat> we get way down here. And this is my 24 count cable coming into the splice tray. Um, you know, <clears throat> pretty, pretty aggressive bend, but it makes for uh, clean, clean uh, workings. Now all that slack is right there. <clears throat> if there was an emergency, then I gotta really pull one of these trays out. I can take this whole tray, it's on a shelf, and it will go forward about two feet. This one just unscrews and comes out uh, straight out the front. So we just break those zip ties, take it over, get, get some slack enough to work with, um, you know, and then that's, that's kind of that. All right. Just kind of doing this uh, for my sanity, but also I'm gonna show how we're how we're making this happen. Um, we are running 10 gig circuits out of this. Uh, <coughs> 10 and you know one gig circuits still. We are going to be upgrading um, our two layer two switches here in the switch stack um, to a 40 gig uh, switch stack. But that's that.